Hi guys, today we're going to have a quick look at some of the suggested Teams settings that you might want to change when you set up a new team. So by the end of the video you'll know our recommended settings but more so why we think that you shouldn't mess around with it too much so stick around for the why. Hi, I'm Gavin at MeTime and we help organisations with modern workplace transformations. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified every time we release a new video We've got a new video on Teams coming out every Tuesday. If you need help with end user training, make sure you hit the free download link in the description below to get access to our deck that helps with training to go along with our full basic tutorial on YouTube, which is also linked below. And if you need more help unlocking all the benefits of Microsoft 365 and linking it to business processes and results, then make sure you book a call to find out how we can help if we're a fit to work together. So let's get in and have a look at some of the settings in Teams. Okay, so this video came about from me seeing a few things online about people turning lots of functionality in Teams off um, because they're scared about security and privacy. So people are about deleting chats within like 24, 48 hours because they're worried about GDPR or people saying something they're not supposed to and then that being on their tenant stored for a longer time and then they're sort of culpable because it's there. Also there's lots of chat about Facebook now buying Giphy and whether they should turn off Giphy in Teams because it might track your users. Um, lots of stuff like that going around and we're not really going to cover any of that so in summary I think your retention if you've got retention policies they should just match whatever the rest of your retention policies are I don't think you should change them because of teams because security uh, although important if you're a security expert obviously it's your job to make sure things are secure um, and you should follow whatever you think best but in practical terms there are a million different ways to secure your data in Microsoft 365, there's loads of different options, um, but pragmatically, people are gonna mess it up if they've not been trained. If you've not trained your people for 20 years since Office came out, and you're, they're still just using X, the same function of Excel and PowerPoint the same way and Word the same way, and they're still emailing things around, then security isn't the issue. Training is the issue. If people don't know a different way of working, they're gonna mess it up if you've got bad actors in your company that are going to share stuff on purpose or steal things on purpose, your security settings won't help you anyway. There's nothing that you can lock down pretty much or not, not many companies unless you're in defense or anything like that is going to lock stuff down enough to stop people taking a, a picture of a document and sharing it. So if it's really bad and you don't want people to share, there's pretty much no help that you can do other than train people to do a better job and be more mindful of that anyway. So the problem then isn't fear of security, it should be fear of irrelevance in Teams. If you lock down too much, people just simply aren't gonna use it. If you block them doing their jobs, there's a million consumer apps or free versions of other apps that people use to get around it. So if you don't have a clear goal, a strategy, a technology stack, whatever you want to call it, to help people actually do what they need to do in their job to get results, they're gonna find a way around it. It's 2020, people are used to technology now, a lot of people are used to technology, someone will find a way around to make something easier for them to do that's not using the software that you want them to use potentially if you lock stuff down too much. So for example, there is pretty difficult to stop people you're setting up separate WhatsApp groups and sending PDFs and pictures and doing actual work in WhatsApp groups it's completely then off your comp company tenant. You've got no way of finding anything in there. Uh, if you go to Facebook and say, can I have access to WhatsApp chats because we think that's some security thing going on or some uh, even HR or bullying thing, uh, you don't have an agreement with WhatsApp. It's with the end user only. They will not give you access to anyone. Then there's Facebook groups free version of Slack people might set up themselves and just get a few people on because you haven't set up Teams properly and it's too locked down. People might use Trello rather than Planner if it's really difficult for them to set up a new plan. People might use Dropbox instead of SharePoint because they're used to it and they know how it works and they can get access to their files and share them really easily. People use WeTransfer if you lock down SharePoint sharing too much 
um, and it's difficult for the person you're sharing it with to get access to it and you need sign on or a Microsoft account or whatever, people just use WeTransfer and just get around it. People use SurveyMonkey rather than Forms because they're used to it. All of this exists in even big sorted out companies. It's going to be happening in your organization most probably. So locking down teams because you're fearful of people doing that isn't the right thing. In fact, it's just perpetuating that because as you're stopping them doing something they need to do, they'll find a different way around it anyway. The fear should be that you haven't trained your people how to use technology to make their lives easier in the past 20 years. That's what you need to solve for, not the security. Obviously, you might get a few comments on, oh, well, I need to lock it down because of blah, 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 or this reason or defense. And if you do need to do that, fine. But I'm just saying 80% of organizations that aren't in defense or government or anything that's actually needs to be secure, you shouldn't fear locking stuff down in teams. You should fear people not using it and just going back to what they were doing before or using some other app that you don't have zero control over whatsoever. Rant over. Therefore, the only options we recommend changing is to leave all the defaults the same Make sure you've got Excel access turned on in case people need to invite third parties to collaborate in Teams. If you don't do that, they'll find a different way of doing that anyway. They might move back into email. They might share stuff uh, that they don't want to do by accident. They might use WeTransfer. All the stuff we've just been through. So turning off Excel access isn't securing you. It's just making it harder to use Teams to actually get stuff done. So make sure we've got the guest access turned on. Let's dive into the team. The only thing we recommend doing really is one, I'm a massive convert on this. So join or create team. If you click that, it lets you create a team if you've got uh, admin rights or if you haven't changed the default settings of teams, pretty much anyone can do this. And if you don't have a strategy about how everything in Teams is gonna to fit together and Microsoft 365 is gonna to work together and how you want people to work and how you're gonna make their lives easier, then just go ahead and leave the default the same because you don't have a strategy anyway. Therefore, you shouldn't be bothered about clutter. Best that they're just trialing error themselves and you might find some in the organization that's really passionate and develops a plan for you. Uh, if you want to develop a plan together, schedule a call with us in the description below and we can go through, we go all through this in our new Unlock the Power of Modern Workplace program. Uh, little aside over, if you don't have a strategy, just leave it on. If you do have a strategy, you want to turn this off. You don't want people creating teams because as you roll teams out and train new people, the training might go really, really well. But as you evolve over time, people will regress back into email because they've been doing it since email was invented. Um, that's all they've known for the past 20 years. It's difficult to change that habit, they'll move back into email, and also they'll get confused or forget the difference between a team and a channel. So quite often people use those two interchangeably because it's completely new terminology. This has only just come about, again, they've been used to lots of other technology for a long, lot longer. So the last thing you want is people setting up a new team when they think they want a new channel or when they actually meant they wanted a new channel in an existing team. That will create a lot of clutter. Um, and if you've got a strategy and you know that you want some big teams and how it's all gonna to fit together and all the stuff that we recommend and work with people to do, you don't want them then shortcutting your strategy. You want a way of managing that and probably some sort of form they can fill in um, and someone to go and have a chat with them and get back and see how everything fits together and whether they do need a new channel or whether they need to just use the existing stuff you've put provided for them or whether they do actually genuinely need a new team and that should be very very quickly because remember if you do turn this off it takes like what 10 seconds to create a new team so you need to make sure your response rate is sort of in line with that speed there's no point for getting them to jump around hoops to create a team if they think they want one you need to get back to them and say why either they can or can't have one pretty quickly because you're replacing a 10 second ability if you then make it a week long, they're just going to get around it anyway. Like I say, if you lock it down too much, they'll work around it. But we recommend do, do turn it off if you follow our guidance and do have a strategy. The only other things you should really be bothered about is when you do set up a team that you check out settings 
Uh, make sure we add a picture, although we haven't for the YouTube one. And then in member permissions, I would recommend turning off, allow members to create and update channels for the same reason we just talked about. If you've got a strategy and you know what channels should be there and you know what teams should be there, you don't then want people creating other channels without having some sort of discussion about, well, why do you want a separate channel? In our experience, every time or 99% of the time someone's asked for a brand new channel, it's because they want to store their own things in a channel in files. They don't realize that they can just create another subfolder in another channel and keep their files separately anyway. Um, nothing happens in that channel and it just slowly goes to die. So you'd want to have a conversation with someone about whether they need a new channel or a new team, which is why we want to turn off allow members to create and update channels. Allow members to delete and restore channels, I would turn off because you don't want people deleting channels by accident. It is quite uh, relatively easy to just click the wrong thing. Uh, you do get a pop-up, but if you hit enter by mistake, um, then you might end up deleting stuff you don't want. And especially if you've got a large team and a well-used channel structure that we would work with you and recommend, then you definitely don't want to delete that because that's going to be all of your business processes in there. Um, that you want to keep. So allow members to create private channels is turned off when you stop people that uh, creating and updating channels. Um, but again, you want to have that conversation to see if you can get away with a private channel in a team versus creating a brand new team. Allow members to add and remove apps we would turn off because people tend to play around with third party things that might require a subscription and um, you basically want to have a discussion and move them probably to Microsoft 365 app. If they want to use Trello, for example, you can move them over to Planner, um, stuff like that. So we probably don't want people messing about with the apps too much. It also can obviously post that you've added an app into the channel and then it just confuses people like, well, we've got this thing pop up. What's that about? Um, and you might generate a lot of noise um, that you don't want, especially as people are getting used to using Teams. Um, allow members to upload custom apps, you probably don't want to turn off. Probably no one's going to do that anyway, um, but just worth turning off. Allow members to create, update and remove tabs is fine because you want to give people their own little workspace in a channel um, once you've been through and set it up for them. Um, and allow members to create, update and remove connectors. Again, you probably don't want, you probably want a conversation, um, although that's less of an issue with connectors than other apps. But again, it's going to post into the channel. If someone's added a connector and they don't really know what it is, then just having to play around, it's going to create a lot of noise in your channels. And again, people might wonder what they're about. You want to give the members the option to delete their own messages because that's just nice, isn't it? If you post something you didn't mean to, it's nice to be able to retract it. And give the option to edit their own messages is also good. Guest permissions um, just enable channel creation. Uh, removes the guest options to allow guests to create and update channels and allow guests to delete channels. That's all linked to uh, this one, I think. So if you turn this off, it turns this one off. And if you can't, if you don't allow people to delete, it doesn't allow, allow guests to delete anyway. So they're both off. App mentions, we would recommend turning off, allowing members the option to add team. Again, a lot of things change in Teams. But when we first started on Teams, we found that if you do at team, it obviously pings the entire team. If you do at channel and the channel is general, it pings the entire team anyway. So why have both? Well, the only difference we found is that if you hide one of these uh, teams, if you've got a hidden team and someone does at team in the hidden team, you'll still get notified. If someone does at general in a hidden team, it seemed like it seemed like you didn't get notified again at the time. So things might have changed, things might be bugs, things might have changed on purpose, who knows, but we always turn that off because you can just do at general anyway, there's no real need to do at team. Um, and then fun stuff as we talked about, I'll just leave the same. So don't bother turning off Giphy. For most businesses, you're not gonna lock down Giphy use on your, uh, web browser, you're not going to lock down Google, you're not going to lock down people using Facebook. Even if you do, they're going to, they can use their own devices at work. So it's not like they're going to be messing about, although it is, you know, they might be messing about, but they're going to mess about anyway, whether they use yours, whether they use Teams or something else. Um, and if you bother about tracking, there's a million different things they're going to get tracked on using the internet anyway. So 
Unless something really bad comes about Giphy and Facebook buying it, I wouldn't be that bothered. Um, there hasn't been a lot of discussion about, you know, Giphy tracking stuff and, you know, it has to request things through and whether Microsoft have embedded it in the right way. For most organizations, I think it's going to be fine. No one's going to steal your actual work data um, if you enable Giphy. I think it's going to be fine. Might be wrong. Who knows? Especially on the internet, it's bad to put stuff if then this uh, comes into a massive security scandal. Um, but Microsoft wouldn't have it in if it was that lax. They would do something, I'm sure. So those are settings we recommend on the team. They used to be, um, this used to be in this team settings, but it's now been moved to general. So uh, depending on what time you're watching it, it may have moved again. So if you go to general, three dots, and then manage channel, then you get this general channel. Again, this used to be in the main settings. Anyone can post messages in general. Anyone can post show alerting that posting will notify everybody and only, the low, only owners can post messages. So if you've got a large team, which is what we recommend, I'd put it to anyone can post, but show alert that posting will notify everybody, which it doesn't actually do anymore. because it used to be that the general channel was always followed, um, but now it defaults to custom, which again is odd that it's called um, custom because it's, you, it's notifications are off for all new posts and um, channel mentions just come in your banner and feed like normal. When Teams first came out, then general used to be on sort of follow, well, I used to call it follow and favorite. So follow was that you get notified about everything that gets posted in a channel. Um, that doesn't default to that anymore. So that would be all activity. Um, so it's odd that then every channel is the default is that it's custom. Um, every channel's default is custom because it's not following it. It's not all activity. Um, so that's odd that Microsoft would choose to, that the default would show as custom because the custom should be, you're not following it. You're not getting notified about everything. You're just getting notified about app mentions there. So it doesn't still notify everybody if you don't do an app mention, but it does, if you turn that on and you're a large team, it does pop up and say, look, there's going to be 200 people seeing this message potentially because I guess everybody will have shown general um, and not hidden it because you can't hide general at the time of recording still. Um, so that will go bold. They'll see there's something there. So it's nice just to, to give a give a little nudge to say, hey, unlike our channel etiquette um, guide that we've, well, I'll link to, it might be that you don't want people to put stuff in general anyway, uh, as a general rule, pun intended. Um, or you can just turn it off completely. So if you want to use the general channel just for SharePoint News Connector or just for top down posts. Um, the only difference, the only downside about that is that then no one can sort of um, interact, uh, I guess, with um, things or post their own, post their own sort of notifications. So you want to, I would say, go for the middle one and uh, get a good, good mix of uh, top down stuff and reducing noise. Uh, but allow people to, to do that themselves as well. Okay, so I hope that was useful. Give the video a like if you liked it, and remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't already. Click the free download link to get our deck for training if you need some help and user training to go along with our basic training tutorial series on YouTube, which is also linked. And if you need help looking at all of the structure of Teams and Microsoft 365, how everything fits together, and how you can drive adoption to make meaningful efficiency gains, in your organization, then click the schedule a call link to have a chat, see if you're a good fit for our program. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.